Hello and welcome to 3 Minute Gaming, I'm Nathan, and I'm going to tell you this game's with your time and bandwidth. Today's game is Super Bullet Break, mixing gotcha game waifus with Slay the Spire gameplay. Is Super Bullet Break the deck building roguelike you've been waiting for? Super Bullet Break is available on PC, Nintendo Switch, and PlayStation, where MSRP's for $20. And the game time will vary kind of based on your luck and RNG, but for me, it took about 8 hours to beat the entire game. So what exactly is Super Bullet Break? Well, it's a roguelike deck builder with a heavy emphasis on gotcha style mechanics to unlock new cards, as well well as its high difficulty and large amount of card customization and variety. The plot, in quotations, of this game is that all games on a particular handheld system are controlled by AI, but something's gone rogue and corrupted all the individual games, be they Final Fantasy knockoffs, dating sims, space shmups, or whatever. It's up to you to beat back the once good guys and have them join you as cards, to eventually fight the corruption bosses until you save all video games, uh, basically. The game is fairly simple if you are familiar with any roguelike deck builder since Slay the Spire. You are tossed into a branching path map where nodes represent battles, shops, or events, and guides your character to the end where you will fight a boss. Do this three times per stage and you beat the stage. In battles, the game does mix things up a bit. You will draw an assortment of cards which all attack in some way but also have side effects as well. There's standard stuff like armored shield or poison, but what's really neat is on specific powers and synergies. Since the cards are based around different video games, each game has its own core mechanic, where should you get multiple cards from that group, you'll find a strong connection. For example, the dating sim cards have heart explosion, where if you generate 100 points into that meter, you'll get massive buffs for all of your cards. You can get cards from any of the various games on each run depending on which cards you have and haven't unlocked, so picking synergies is very important. Additionally, each card has a random passive attached to it called a cartridge, as the cards are bullets, which can significantly alter what the card does. These range from increasing damage, but also increasing costs, to crazy things like always starting in your opening hand, adding status effects, and more. Combat's unique because unlike most other deck builders where you have to spend a resource to play cards, each card costs time. At the top, you can see how many blocks it'll be until the enemy's turn, and each card takes a set number of those blocks. With each card you play, you draw a new one, meaning there's a lot of strategy about when to play high versus low cards. Unlocking new cards is done via gotcha, in that you can earn roll tokens or buy them with in-game money. Choose on a store to get a random girl slash bullet based on the requirements you want. Note that you can't use real money at all in this game, it's all internal. And of course, in true gotcha fashion, almost all the bullets are anime girls, some even with the same characters in different outfits or styles, incentivizing unlocks if you're into that kind of thing. So overall, Super Bullet Break is a deck builder with a unique twist on card costs and passes paired with anime girls and a gotcha mechanic. So what do I like about Super Bullet Break? Well, I enjoyed the visual style quite a bit, mostly, especially with each zone being themed around a particular type of video game and the card mechanics and art from that zone synergizing. Additionally, the game structure around the cost of cards being tied to how long it is for the enemy's turn is really genius for this, and it leads to some really fun strategizing and prioritizing based on card costs. And lastly, this has a ton of stuff that makes these kinds of games great, particularly some insane synergies and combos with the addition of flex passives to bullet cards, allowing for even more variety and brokenness. When it comes to the bad, the difficulty is all over the place, with it generally being harder than most deck builders, but I found the first zone to be tough, the second and third to be really, really easy, and the fourth to be completely brutal. Not to mention things like three-star encounters on the map are often harder than the bosses. Additionally, because of this difficulty, the fact that the deck draws are so inconsistently to a ton of runs just dying of RNG before you even hit the first boss, no player choice involved. This is a game where if those first two draws don't have high synergy or aren't high stars, the whole run might be forfeit. And lastly, I have some really mixed feelings about the gacha art. Not only just the quality vary between individual characters and artists, but also its level of, and I think this is the tactful way of saying this, hoardiness of the various cards. Most of it I found to be generally okay, but I do think some of the inconsistencies cheapen the game. As you know, our game's here on a three-point scale, must play, maybe consider, don't bother. I think this game is a maybe consider. Super Bullet Break is a really interesting game with some great new mechanics to add to the genre, but its inconsistent difficulty and high reliance on RNG means I can't wholeheartedly recommend it. When it works, it works well and it feels fantastic, but when you lose, you often feel just cheated. Still, if you enjoy Slay the Spire and anime wife views, you should probably give this game a look. That's all I have today. Thank you so much for watching. If you heard of Super Bullet Break, please let me know in the comments, but regardless, go out there and check it out.